So you've seen Avengers Endgame, or you don't want to see it and just want to hear about what happened, you've come to the right place. Let's talk about the movie, full spoilers ahead. So if you clicked on this by accident, you better go now and click on the review because that is spoiler free. If not, stick around, we're going to talk about it. So the movie starts off with Hawkeye, who we saw in the trailer, was definitely going to be in this movie. And as we suspected, as I suspected, that I knew that he was going to lose his family somehow. I, For some reason, I didn't actually click that when Thanos... Thanos actually eliminated half the living population in the universe. I didn't, for some reason, my brain didn't register that that's what, that's what might have happened with Hawkeye's family. So sure enough, he's there teaching his daughter how to shoot a bow and arrow and stuff. And then all of a sudden they're gone. And then I realized, oh, that's how he lost his family. <laughs> it's because of Thanos. For some reason, I thought somebody else would have taken out his family a different way, a little bit more tragic than that. Not that that wasn't tragic, but anyway... That's what sort of makes Hawkeye get this new haircut and start killing bad guys and just go crazy. And he kind of reunites with the Avengers once again. Then we see Tony Stark stuck in space on this spaceship. No fuel. He's with Nebula. He's running out of oxygen. He sends out a distress signal to Pepper Potts. And... That's when we see, this is very early on in the film too, that's when we see Captain Marvel who comes to the rescue, grabs the ship, brings him back down to Earth and he's greeted to all the Avengers. That's where the Avengers actually regroup and Tony Stark looked very sickingly like HIV ridden skinny. He really, they did a great job of making him look thin. He must have dieted down and really depleted himself of nutrients unless it's just like CGI magic but he looked really sickingly ill uh during that scene where he's just come back from space and they've done a great job because obviously like no food no like uh, barely any water or whatever else he had to face up there while he was stuck he was definitely depleted of all his nutrients and they did a good job of making him look really sickingly ill which he definitely did the avengers are clearly defeated and they can they actually look really defeated we actually see them more as humans in this not as superheroes they just like they i don't think they have much more fight left in them they can't find thanos it's been three weeks since thanos has uh, eliminated half the population in the universe and he's nowhere to be found they have no idea how to find him then nebula speaks up and reveals that she knows how to find her father so now the avengers start coming up with a plan to find thanos and well hopefully eliminate him forever whatever the case may be they definitely need to get their hands on that gauntlet so if they get the infinity stones with the gauntlet then maybe they can bring all of their fallen allies back so all those you know avengers and superheroes that are gone they want to bring them back so they do locate Thanos who's conveniently all alone no army I don't know why <laughs> he's just all alone making like a stew or something I can't remember what he was doing it's just it's like he's living a very secluded farm life except he's a big alien being so they ambush him they take him down very easily which didn't make sense to me to begin with but then it did as soon as they started talking to him it turns out that Thanos destroyed the infinity stones and it almost killed him. So he's in an extremely weakened state right now. And this is all within the first 15 to 20 minutes of the film, mind you. I wasn't timing it, but it's very, very early on. And the Avengers don't believe that he's destroyed the Infinity Stones. They wouldn't believe that he's gone to all this effort just to destroy them. But the thing is, Nebula also did mention that her father isn't one thing. He's not a liar. So she definitely believes him. And me personally thinking about this he's achieved his purpose his goal he won he's victorious and the only way to make sure that someone doesn't get their hands on the gauntlet and, in, and the infinity stones and then that possibly reverse everything that he's achieved is by destroying them so in a way he thanos destroying the infinity the infinity stones is actually uh the 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 nail in the coffin and the seal of his victory and that was enough for Thor to hear because out of nowhere, woof, he just cuts Thanos' head off and Thanos is defeated. After all the, the stuff that they've gone through, all the crap in Infinity War, within the first 15 minutes, Thanos is defeated, just like that. This is what I was talking about in my review. I did not see that coming. I didn't even think they'd find Thanos that quickly, nor did I think that Thanos would destroy the stones and be in this super weakened state all alone, just exposed. So if he if he's found out, then he's really got nowhere to hide. But maybe he's not really hiding. Maybe he just feels like he's victorious and he doesn't care now what happens. So he's just going to live out the, the rest of his days as is, you know, mission accomplished kind of thing. I don't know. I just think it was way too easy and I didn't see it coming. So after all that, 
Thanos gets his head cut off by Thor, who had the chance to defeat him in Infinity War and kind of still feels responsible, I suppose. So he got his revenge or his vengeance. He cut off Thanos' head this time. He definitely went for the head. Um, but I was really surprised there, as probably everyone else in the theater was as well. It was just like silence. And then after that, it's five years later and we get to see how people are sort of trying to live out their remaining days knowing that the Infinity Stones have been destroyed and the gauntlet's gone. You can't really, like, there's no way to bring everyone back again because the power of the stones is gone. There's no other way to do it. Or is there? Because Ant-Man manages to come back through some quantum time travel. And he actually sees this big memorial stone with all the names of the fallen on there. And Steve Lang, he's there. So there was just some little chance in this microscopic quantum universe that you can actually survive. And somehow he did. Not that that really helps matters because all he knows is there's a chance of survival. And he actually runs to Tony Stark immediately. And Tony Stark kind of just brushes him away and says it's like you know an 800 millionth of a of a chance that you actually survive you just happened to it was just like by luck that you survived but ant-man isn't so convinced he really just wants to he he seems to think that tra time travel is possible and that he can bring back the rest of the avengers and and the rest of their friends and Tony Stark, even though he kind of dismissed it all, he does start working on things and actually figures out time travel somehow. I don't know how. Tony, Tony Stark's a very, very intelligent man because he can pretty much figure out anything. And in this case, he's on his little hologram computer and stuff and he figures out time travel. So those of you that watched the trailer and suspected that time travel will have a, 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 a role to play in this film, I mean, there had to be time travel in this film because all those characters can't be gone. We know that they want to make a Spider-Man film, another Doctor Strange film. They can't be gone forever. They can't be defeated. Not all of them, not like that. So we knew that some sort of time travel would have to uh, play a role in this film. And that's kind of how it works. And also... In this point of the film, five years after the death, the 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 the, death, the the murder, I should say, of the defeat, the defeat, I should say, of Thanos, we're treated to characters that people might not be too happy with how they've actually ended up. For for one, the Hulk and Bruce Banner have kind of become one. So it's like. Bruce Banner's in the Hulk form, but he looks more like Bruce and he can control the Hulk. It's like Bruce Banner plus the Hulk. He's got the muscle, the brawn, but he's in full control. So it's not that, let's smash shit Hulk. It's more like Bruce Banner as the Hulk. So a lot of people, I think, will be disappointed by this because we don't really see the Hulk smashing anything or really having much of a role to play in the movie other than Bruce Banner sort of taking charge of the whole time travel thing with Tony Stark but I think some people will be disappointed by this don't know where it's going to go in the future if there is a future this could be end game after all and Thor it was actually really funny because he becomes the dude, the big Lebowski. He's just like wearing Crocs and he's full on fat drinking beer playing PlayStation or video games with cork and I can't believe his gut. I can't, I just, the, I really, it, was, it took me by surprise and I thought at some stage throughout the film he'd start working out or, or time would progress and he'd be back in shape. But no, he's fat for the entire film. In the beginning it was funny but I was kind of hoping that we'd get that Thunder God uh, Thor back who actually is like, you know, chiseled and muscular and looks like a Thunder God. But um, no, they've left him fat, which I suppose is more realistic because it would be very unrealistic if he kind of just got his awesome physique back um, overnight or in a different scene. So it is definitely, it adds to the realism. So I like what they did there, but I'm also a little bit disappointed that it was just fat the whole time. But it was funny, I suppose. If they do, and if, if Thor appears in any other movies, which I think he will, judging by the end when he, when he goes with the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, AKA as Guardians of the Galaxy, they're probably going to do like Thor with the Guardians of the Galaxy type movie in the future. But who knows? I'm sure that if they do, he'll get back into his shape. But he's definitely very fat in this one, and yeah. 
just sits around drinking beer. And he kind of probably feels them more responsible than anybody because he had a chance to, you know, hit the head in Infinity War and hit Thanos in the head and actually take him out and it would have been over. So I guess he felt a lot more responsible. Also the death of Loki. So he finally got his vengeance and then just kind of let himself go just drinking beer playing video games. It's not a bad life actually. So skipping ahead a bit, the Avengers all come together. They've all sort of been dealing with all this in their own separate ways. And they come up with the idea, the plan to obtain the Infinity Stones before Thanos does. And then click the fingers of the gauntlet and get all their friends back. And then we're treated to a lot of uh, past movies. Like at one stage they travel to a point in time in Avengers 1 where like there's that big battle in New York City and everything's all happening there. It just travels to different parts of different films. It goes to Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1 as well, which I thought was really awesome. I liked that. I wasn't too keen on the whole time travel idea a lot of people will be thinking right now well why didn't they just go to uh, travel back to when Thanos was a baby and just kill the baby that was suggested in the film because I think the directors and the creators of this film knew that people would think that it's the obvious question on everybody's lips and they did cover that off saying that if they kill him as a baby all these other things would change and there'll just be someone else that'll you know replace him so it wouldn't really change anything and the best thing to do is trying to uh, uh, possess those obtain those uh, infinity stones and do it that way so they did but because of nebula somehow Thanos was able to track the hardware in the past Nebula's mind and connect it to the future Nebula's who's now in the past and then realized that the Avengers are actually have traveled back in time. So he's aware what's happening. And that's where things get interesting because obviously uh, a lot of what happened in Infinity War from then onwards didn't didn't really happen and we're all we also saw loki escape there was like a botched job that um tony stark drops the drops a briefcase and the tesseract falls out and loki just escapes so now loki is no longer dead i believe he's alive so he might appear in a future film so stay tuned for that loki is definitely alive now because that obviously changed the future or the present based on what happened in the past because he didn't originally escape with the, the, the Tesseract, but now he did. And sadly, remember when Thanos had to make a sacrifice, you have to, you have to, the death of somebody you love and you get one of those infinity, infinity stones. Well, in this case, Hawkeye and Black Widow were in a position where one of them, where one of them had to die and i like both characters and i was hoping that somehow they'd find a way to for both of them to stay alive and they're fighting each other off they're trying to they're both willing to take a sacrifice they don't want the other one to die and black widow's about to jump off and then all of a sudden hawkeye shoots an arrow explodes <laughs> uh you know towards her so she doesn't get to the cliff then he goes to jump and she just tackles him and then uses some sort of like you know uh gun claw to be hanging there and all of a sudden hawkeye's hanging there and he's holding on to her it was really really tense and stressful probably the most tense part of the movie for me because i like both characters i didn't really want to see anyone die i want all my characters back um but i suppose there has to be some some sad deaths in the movie some loss and unfortunately black widow is gone so hawkeye obtained that infinity stone but we've lost black widow forever and apparently they can't bring her back even if they reunite all the stones together in the gauntlet apparently because of the way that it happened to obtain the stone they can't bring her back so that's i hope they find a way to bring her back it's the movies it's it's the marvel universe i'm sure if they really want to they can find a way come on damn it find a way and then the hulk manages the hulk is like well thor first actually puts his hand up to when they do obtain all the infinity stones thor wants to put on the gauntlet to click the fingers to try and reverse what happened but hulk kind of said that he's the only one that could take the power which i don't know thor's a god so you'd think that thor might be able to take the hit but apparently because of the type of radiation it could kill thor or something like that so long story short the hulk decides to put the gauntlet on snap the fingers and things seem to have gone back to the way that they were hulk's arm is all screwed up it's all burnt out and stuff but he survived thankfully and it looks like things are sort of going back to how they were and then boom thanos from the past 
finds a way because he knew the Avengers were time traveling. He gets his hand on that. He gets his fingers on that little serum thing. Nebula brings him like a serum thingy. I forget what they're called. Um, plutonium <laughs> for, for time travel. I forget what they're called now, but there's a lot of things happening. So he finds a way because he realizes what the Avengers are doing and he knows they've obtained all the stones. So it's even easier for him. He doesn't have to get them individually. He can just time travel to the future and get all the stones once the Avengers have them. And that's when he appears. So Hulk clicks his fingers. Things kind of go back to normal. Or they're starting to. And then Thanos appears. And there's uh, that's when there's the huge end battle that, that happens. And they start fighting Thanos. And then Thanos' army is there. But then all of our favorite Avengers return. So they come through portals that Doctor Strange does, like all these portals start appearing everywhere in the sky and all of our favorite Avengers start coming back, the Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Doctor Strange, you know, Black Panther, I think was the first one that came through. You got the Winter Soldier. My, one of my all-time favorite characters, the Scarlet Witch, didn't like Vision that much, so I'm not really sad that he's dead. I think he's actually legit dead, but I don't really care. Uh, like, I don't really really enjoyed the fact that he got the Scarlet Witch because, you know, that should be my girlfriend. I don't think that he deserves the Scarlet Witch. But anyway, Scarlet Witch in the comics is super powerful. And at one stage, she's the only one that single-handedly, one-on-one, actually defeated Thanos. She had him beat. He had to resort to the rockets on his spaceship to actually be launched and really start... Um, blowing up the ground and stuff before he was released. That's the only way he was released from her grasp because she was like using her power to undo his armor and all that sort of stuff. But in the comics, Scarlet Witch is like, she could devour planets and just like destroy someone with the click with the click of her fingers. She's super powerful. So I do like the fact that they've empowered her a lot more in this. It's a lot more accurate to the comics. So that was really cool. I loved seeing Scarlet Witch come back. But in the end... There was only one chance, one chance. And Thanos actually ends up getting his gauntlet back. He got his gauntlet back with Infinity Stones and he was about to click his fingers and then Doctor Strange motioned to Iron Man. This is the one chance. This is the one chance they have to defeat Thanos. And Iron Man attempts to grab the gauntlet, fails. He gets thrown away by Thanos or hit away and Thanos clicks his fingers, but... The Infinity Stones are gone. Iron Man took the Infinity Stones and has them like in his own Iron Man suit. So he clicks his fingers and defeats, kills all of the bad guys. They all start disintegrating, turning to dust, much like our superheroes did in Infinity War. And Thanos just sits down knowing that he's defeated, <sighs> takes a deep breath and slowly vanishes, and turns into dust. However, unfortunately... Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, noticed that I, that Tony Stark is in all sorts of trouble and that he's dying. His uh, health levels are critical, as you know, reported by his computer that he uses, his uh, uh, program. And now he was embracing Peter Parker in, 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 Infin in Infinity War. And there was a really cool moment where like Tony Stark was always sort of not, not really emotional and never really wanted to hug Peter Parker, Peter Parker sorry, and show him any emotion. But then he felt so responsible for his death. When Spider-Man, Peter Parker returns, he gave him this huge hug, which I really enjoyed. I thought, you know, he put everything aside and felt so responsible. He felt so bad about the death of Peter Parker. He's just a young boy and now he's back. So he gives him this huge hug. Uh, this was before he actually obtained the Infinity Stones and clicked his fingers. And now Peter Parker is the one that's like, Sir, it's another emotional moment that got to me. Um, probably the only one in the film, that w the only moment where I actually felt emotional. Uh, in, in Infinity War, I felt really emotional with Tony Stark talking to Peter Parker. He was like, Sir, I don't want to die. I don't... That was so, so emotional, so sad. And this time the roles were reversed. Um, but it's a different type of death. This death is forever. Tony Stark is gone. Tony Stark dies. Iron Man is gone. And, oh man, I'm kind of pissed off. Like, I love Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Like, how, I don't know if you can kill Tony Stark. Like, it was super sad, but also kind of necessary to really have that effect on people. Um, and then there's a, the end scene is just like, this big funeral scene where they're by the river 
and they're paying tribute to the late Tony Stark, aka Iron Man, and everyone's there. Like, I mean, everyone, you know, Black Panther, um, Nick Fury, Captain, like, everybody's there. Everybody that's ever been in one of the Marvel movies is pretty much there. And what else can I say? Iron Man's gone. So we've lost Black Widow and we've lost Iron Man or Tony Stark. Uh, they're the only two deaths, I suppose, in the film that, that seem like legitimate uh, deaths that, you know, probably won't be reversed. I hope they will. I mean, they, I love both of those characters. Like, I wouldn't have been so sad if they killed off maybe like a lesser type of character, like uh, the Winter Soldier or something like that. I mean, he was never really a main character in the movie. He was just in, you know, one of the Captain America films as the villain as Bucky. Like, I wouldn't have really... Uh, been too traumatized if he was gone forever but iron man really gone black widow gone really and the in the end those infin the infinity stones had to be returned to their points in time in the universe so that you know these other universes wouldn't be negatively negatively affected and things can just go back to how they were so it's very important the stones go back and captain america goes back to return them and then they try and bring him back like five seconds later. So five seconds to us, he could he mean like because he's in the past, he could take like, you know, days, weeks or a year. Either way, he could return. It will feel like five seconds to us. However, they can't get him back. And then I, I, I realized immediately that he ended up hooking up with the girl he was supposed to originally, but then went to sleep for seven years or whatever happened. And, you know, he lost the love of his life kind of thing. I'm like, ah. I betcha he chose to be with her. And then we see he's actually some an old man sitting um, by the river, sitting in a chair by the river on a bench, park bench, whatever. And we know that it's Captain America and he's like super old now, come to the end of his life. But he's happy. He chose to be with her. He chose love over being an Avenger and he decides to, to this old Captain America passes on his shield to the Falcon, which I was surprised by because I thought that he would have passed it on to the Winter Soldier, to Bucky, to be the next Captain America. But I suppose they've got plans for him being the Winter Soldier in a, in a future film or something like that. And Falcon now has the Captain America shield and he's going to take the reins as Captain America. So I found that a bit surprising, you know? I mean, I know Captain America was close to both the Falcon and Bucky. I just kind of really thought the shield go to Bucky but anyway it doesn't really matter that much I, I like being surprised anyway maybe maybe they knew that audiences would think that would happen and they just want to keep everyone surprised so they definitely managed to do this throughout the film several times and the end was no exception that's pretty much it for the film summarized. I'm getting a real sore throat now. So let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you really enjoyed in the film that I might have missed there or anything else that you were surprised by. Please feel free to discuss down below. Please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this and want to see more movie reviews and spoiler discussions. It'll really motivate me to do a lot more. So if that's what you want to see, thumbs up. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, stay tuned to the channel, and most importantly, Stay creepy.